there. Hi, you guys. Now I'm live on YouTube, live on Instagram. Two minutes. Can you guys let me know how the sound is? Good morning and welcome to another episode of Untangled. Episode 30. Really excited to be here. Trigger and I share a magical life. Tigger and I share a magical life together. I love it. I feel crazy energy. Yep. I'm doing a uh, my last live online event today at 12 o'clock California time. If you want to join, the link is in my bio. It's a two-hour event. It's going to be really powerful, but it's going to be talking about this past year, what we've gone through and the awareness of that and the the um, the integration of everything that we have gone through, uh, the tools that we've learned, the tools that we're going to use to step into 2023, and then really setting these powerful intentions for 2023. That's today at 12 o'clock. But join me on YouTube right now. Go jump over youtube.com backslash Lori Ladd for Untangled episode. What episode are we on? 30. Let's talk about these wonky energies. Let's talk about our evolution. Let's talk about the uncomfortable. I'll see you guys over there. I love you. Mwah. And we'll talk about why you're so freaking angry. Get over to YouTube. I love you. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to be here with you guys. It's good to show up. Um, okay. I am here. I am here with all of you and it's very, very, very nice to be here. Okay. How's the sound? You guys, does it sound good? Sound is good. Sound is good. Sound is good. Yay, 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 yay. Oh, goodness gracious. Wow. We are ending the, some, the winter solstice. Whew. If you're watching this live, winter solstice tomorrow. Holy cannolis. Can you guys feel the energy? It's like a buildup. I don't know, like, you know, the best way to describe well, before I get going, first of all, welcome to another episode of Untangled. We are on episode 30, and um, I started this, this series on YouTube to talk about the human evolution, what we're going through, how we're going through it, why we're going through it, and really to get into the nitty-gritty of the uncomfortable, the, the shadow, the dark, the stuff we don't like to feel and see and hear and talk about within ourselves and also in the external world. And to make that uh, that uncomfortableness comfortable, to learn how to stand in the fire, um, to learn how to not run. And I think that this one practice is what is going to assist us the most, in my opinion, in navigating the next couple of years. Um, we have got to stop running from the most uncomfortable things that are arising within us and outside of us. Because the evolution in human consciousness requires us to see the most uncomfortable. That is consciousness shifting. That's the evolution. That's energy moving from one frequency to another frequency. And the only way that energy can move is by you as the awareness, as the observer, being conscious of that energy. Otherwise, it, there is no realization of it. There is no uh, actualization of it. You can't experience anything that you can't see or that you can't observe, right? So you have to become the observer and you have to become conscious of what it is that you are in and what you have been in, in order for it to evolve out of you or for you to shift, right? So this is all an energetic game. This is an energetic experience. And because we live on a planet that has duality and polarity, what we do is we judge it and we categorize it and we make it right or wrong, good or bad, yes, no, should, shouldn't, right? Need to be, don't need to be, blah, 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 when simply it's just energy. It's just an expression of energy that's moving through your body that you as the awareness or observer is experiencing. Um, and so when you go through a massive evolutionary shift like you are going through right now, it is very intense because we are living on a planet that holds a huge amount of really uh, low frequency energies, low frequency experiences. When you are standing on a planetary body, 
that is consumed, there's clouds of um, much lower frequencies than what you are designed to experience, meaning that the human is designed to experience uh, much higher frequency consciousnesses. Um, but you, we have to evolve into that. We have to, we have to, uh, we have to walk into it almost, or bring awareness to it, right? And the planet is inundated right now with these lower frequencies, with fear, with mind control, with coercion, with programming, with trauma, um, with victimhood, with um, unconsciousness, right? So we have to see that. We have to look at, at all of our programming. We have to look at all of our limiting beliefs, which means you have to feel it. All energy is, is you is a feeling. The only way that you can experience an energy is through the feeling of it. Feeling, it doesn't mean it's an emotion. Okay. Feeling just means that you're feeling an energy. That's the only way that you can experience energy is through the feeling of it. You can't think energy. Okay. You can't even really know energy. Energy can only be experienced through a feeling, the feeling body. Right. And so, and it's, and the only way that you feel as a consciousness is through the physical body. So the physical body is what is allowing you as consciousness to feel energies. And what you're doing right now is you're inside your awareness as consciousness is inside a physical vessel that is moving through a lot of lower frequency energies, trauma, limiting beliefs, old behaviors that continue to pop up. Right. And what happens is as these energies move through you and you as the awareness, as the observer, as consciousness feels it through the body because the body is giving you access to those energies, you judge it. You categorize it. You push it aside and say, nope, that's wrong. Nope, that's bad. Yes, this is good, right? And we have these ideas of how we're supposed to go through this or how we're supposed to heal or how we're supposed to navigate all of this. And that's the ego trying to understand and control how this works. It's and and when the more that you can remember that this is just an energetic shifting, as you go through the very mundane, intense human experiences, the easier it is. It doesn't take away from what you're going through, right? So what we're in right now is. We're, we have we have gone through a year. I'm going to be talking about this in my class that I'm doing in three hours. I'm doing a um, my last live online event. It's called Activate 2023. I'm doing it today at 12 p.m. California time. It's two hours, $29, unlimited access to the replay. But basically, we're going to be talking about integrating 2022. This was probably one of the most transformational years for humanity. Way more transformational than 2020 and way more transformational than 2021. I'll talk about that in my class today. Um, but it was it's it, it's one of the most transformational years of your, of our lives. And if we didn't uh, see this, if we didn't grab everything that was given to us, if we didn't take advantage of what was shown, um, 2023 is going to be quite rattling for a lot of us. So we're stepping into a really powerful year. I'm going to be talking about this in my class today at 12. I'm going to be talking about the energies of 2023. And it's a really, really um, potent year. It's another year of preparation on an energetic level. I mean, every day, every moment is preparation for the next moment, meaning every moment that you're in is a moment to... Uh, elevate or expand. That doesn't mean that you move into higher frequencies consciously, like I'm trying to move into higher frequencies. That's not what it means. It means that your body is constantly shifting you out of old and into new, meaning out of older density, older ways of being, trauma, limiting beliefs, right? These older frequencies that you've been in, that you've been unconsciously or consciously holding yourself in, and the body is elevating you into new new ways, new thoughts, new beliefs, new being beingnesses, new behaviors, new relationships, new friendship, new everything. 
in subtle ways or in or in powerful ways. So anyway, the link to join Activate 2023 is down below. It'll be in the uh, the description. It's today at 12 o'clock California time. It's only $29. It's two hours and it's going to be very, very powerful, very, very potent. Join us if you want. Okay. So what's been going on this past week? Holy Moses. I don't even know where to start. Um, uh, we are giving scholarships away. So if you can't pay, if you can't afford, um, if you can't afford the $29, email us and we're, 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 we're giving scholarships away. Um, Oh my God, I want to go live with the monks in a cave away from everyone. Oh my goodness gracious. That would be incredible, except it's not why you're here. You're not here to run away into the caves, unfortunately. You know, I think one of the things um, that we are remembering over and over and over again, and that I talk about a lot, is that you, we are not here to, to run. And to, as much as we want to go and seclude ourselves, uh, that's not why we're here. Now, that's not to say that you don't take care of yourself. That's not to say that you don't balance. You don't take time out. You don't go and sit in nature. You don't shut off. You don't, you know, go on vacations, whatever it is that you need to do. Obviously, we have to take care of ourselves. But I think what humanity is going to start to realize is that there's nowhere to run, right? And that the only place, the, the safest place to be is grounded heavily in your body. The safest place to be is to be in the now. Where are you right here, right now? What are you experiencing right here, right now? What are you thinking right here, right now? What are you feeling right here, right now? That's the most empowered, courageous, powerful, sovereign, place that you can be. And that's the hardest place for most of us to be, right? But that is what we are being forced to step into. Um, you know, it's really interesting as I watch myself go through this process of, of consciousness evolving, which is the body evolving and you as consciousness is in the body. So the body is giving you access to new energies, new ways of being on the planet as a human. The body is showing you all of the ways that you thought in the past. The body is showing you uh, all of your limiting beliefs. The body is showing you all the emotions that you've stored. The body's basically like a, a mirror and it's like, hey, look, this is what you've been thinking, feeling, doing. Hey, look at these behaviors. Hey, look at this past trauma that's been playing out for 18 years. It's the act, it's the body that's showing you this. The body. Why, why do I say that? Because it's the body that is moving the energies. It's the light that's coming down into your body. And as the light comes into your body, it's rattling the, the darker, denser, slower energies. It's like bursting it open. And these slower, darker energies, right? The denser energies is the trauma, is the limiting beliefs, is the behaviors. It's all energy. Everything is energy inside your body being expressed and experienced, right? So it's your body that is showing you these things. It's just a game. It's a play. Your, body's, your body is showing you a play or a movie. And the issue that we have as humans is that we actually believe that we are these energies. You actually believe that you're the that you are simply just energies moving through your body. And the reason that you believe that you are, meaning you believe the limiting thoughts, you believe the beliefs in your head that they're you, that they're you. You believe that the emotions are you. You attach to these things. I'm a bad person if I feel dot, 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 right? I'm not supposed to feel dot, dot, dot. Why am I still feeling dot, dot, dot? Why do I think these things? When you ask those questions, you're identifying as those energies. And if you can simply remember 
that the energy is just your body saying, hey, take a look at this. Hey, take a look at this. Hey, I now need you to take a look at this. Hey, by the way, you haven't been, you've been ignoring this energy, this emotion, this limiting thought. Can you take a look at it? And then it pops up. And as the observer, you can say, oh, wow, yeah, here it is again for the 18,000th time. Wow, look at that limiting belief that I hold. Look at that pattern that my body is showing me. And then as the body brings it into your awareness, you as the observer have an opportunity to observe it and to feel it. And then all of a sudden, a couple of hours later, the body shows you something else, your anger. Oh, look, the body's showing me anger. Why is the body showing you these things? Because the body wants you to be able to just experience what it needs to move through you. You are designed to simply be in movement all day long, which means that you are designed to simply just feel everything that's arising like a, like a waterfall. And the body is constantly doing its best to get you to just feel and not attach. And one of the things that has been happening for us in 2022 is that we have been individually, like on a personal level, we have been, many of us have been forced into, forced into seeing and changing ways that we have been most of our lives. Forced into it through some sort of physical experience, right? Getting sick or something. Forced into it um, by some accident that happened externally, right? A car accident or you all of a sudden your boss fires you or something happens, right? There's a forcing. We're being forced because we are not courageous enough to actually make the shifts and changes that the body's asking you to make. So then there's this part of you that rattles you into the shifting that is, has been continuing to come up that you've been ignoring. And the last couple of months has gotten really intense for a lot of people. The volume has been turned up. Because we need to be prepared to stand in 2023 as the energies on the planet get more intense so that you can just stand in these intense energies and not run from your own internal battle so that you can be in your highest expression in order to assist yourself and humanity. And your highest expression doesn't mean that you're in high vibrations all the time and you're, you're in joy and love and peace. Your highest expression means that you're just feeling everything. The highest expression that you can be in any moment is simply being in that moment. That's the highest version of you. The highest version of you is not sitting in love and light and peace and joy. The highest version of you is sitting in the now. The highest version of you is being able to stand in any storm and in any fire. That's why there is all this internal work that you are constantly being shown within you all day long. That's why the energies and the emotions are driving you crazy. That's why your thoughts are getting louder and louder and louder. That's why everything is getting louder for you. Because you need to be able to stand in that loudness and realize that you're not the loudness. The louder it gets, if you try to run or get or quiet that loudness, 
It's like you're standing in a fire that's never going to go out and you're trying to put the fire out. It's like, babe, the fire is never going out. You got to just stand in it and you have to learn how to live in that fire through internal awareness, internal contentment, internal peace, internal joy, no matter what fire you're standing in. And I talk about this all the time because 2023 is a year that is going to require this. I can promise you we will, there is no time any longer for us to negotiate with our limiting thoughts, negotiate with our behaviors, negotiate with our traumas, negotiate with our um, patterning. We have to start to courageously step out of it by acknowledging that it's there, by feeling it each time it arises, by choosing, you know, new ways of being as often as we can, and by having compassion for ourselves as we do this. One of the things that you guys know that I'm going through right now is this, um, you know, it's first world problems, obviously, but it's um, it's an interesting experience because I I have I'm being audited by the IRS for two years, 2020, 2021, and um, so I was saying this on an Instagram live the other day. One of the um messages that I've been getting for the past six months since about July, um. One of the messages that I've internally been given over and over by myself to myself is you need to stop. You need to stop. You need to take a break. You need to take a break. You need to take a break, right? And um, I wasn't doing it. I wasn't taking a break. I wasn't stopping my work, my work, right? Um, I didn't know how. I honestly, I don't know how to stop. I don't really know how to take a break. Um, and the way that this whole journey works is that you're going to show yourself whatever you need to see in order to do whatever it is that's required of you, right? So you will show yourself what it is that you need to see in some way, shape, or form, and it's going to get your attention. It You will get your attention if you haven't already. And so when I got audited last week, what I noticed was that I couldn't show up. I couldn't put any attention into my work. You know, I couldn't, nothing mattered other than navigating the energies of being audited, which means the, the stress that's moving through my body, the practicing of being present, um, the awareness that this stress, this energy called stress is uh, creating dot, 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 right? I had to get so present with the stress of the IRS audit that fr that, that, pit, that that pummeling that happened stopped me in my tracks and it reverted, it like, re it like shifted me to a completely different path right now. So on an energetic level, my awareness of where I'm at and what I am focusing on is not um, that this constant like space of show up every day, show up every day, show up every day. I have been like literally kicked onto this other, this other way of being right now where my work is, I have to, I have to shut that down for a little bit to focus on this audit. Cause I don't have somebody that's going to do, I have an accountant and a bookkeeper, but they need, because I work online and I'm a spiritual teacher, they need reasons for everything. So it's forced me to quiet. It's forced me to stop. It's forced me. You know, and again, this is like first world problems, big deal. You've been audited by the IRS who gives a shit, right? I agree. Could have been a thousand times worse. My best friend is going through something that is so horrific. It's, it's awful. You know, she's going through, you know, uh, something with her physical body. 
and it's 10,000 times worse. But what she's going through is pivoting her life. It's changing her life. And there's a deeper reason for what she's going through and why she has what she has. You know, and out of respect for her and, and the information that she's receiving today, I, I'm not going to share it until we receive all the information. But I'm definitely going to talk about it because it's a massive lesson that a lot of us are going through. We will get physically sick if we do not listen to what it is that we are being asked to look at and feel and change in our lives. We will get audited by the IRS. People are going to say, well, are you got audited because of dot, dot, dot. Sure. On the outside, that's what it looks like. But I believe in all of my beingness, and people think I'm crazy, but you know, I don't see anything that we're going through as anything other than an evolution in consciousness. That's it. Every single thing that we are experiencing in every single moment, every single tick of the clock is our evolution in consciousness. So every single thing that is happening to me, for me, by me, is for my evolution. Even if I was, you know, beat up or it doesn't like how, however horrific it, it is, I know that on the deepest level, it's part of the evolution. It's part of shifting out of something and into something. I also know that, that life is not black or white. So there's so many layers to this. And I understand that there are, I say this all the time because it's so important because people get so stuck on your words, literally. But there are many, many experiences where that can't be held, and I get that. But for you know a large percentage of of the population right now, we can begin to perhaps try to hold this awareness that everything is happening for the evolution of human consciousness. And so on one level, you can look at what you're experiencing and saying and say, "Well, this is happening because, you know, uh, my taxes don't look right and they're suspicious. Sure. And then you can also say, what have the messages been that I've been receiving that I've been ignoring within myself? And how is this assisting me into stepping into that which I've been ignoring? What have I been ignoring? What have I been denying? What have I been pushing aside? What have I not been stepping into and listening to that's been internally got asking me to look at? And how is this external experience now forcing me to step into that? That's happening to many of us. Whatever we have been ignoring, whatever we have been pushing aside, whatever we have been intuitively knowing that we need to look at, feel, see, acknowledge, break out of, whatever it is, I can promise you this evolution is not quieting down. This evolution is not getting uh, you know, slower. It's revving up. And the evolution means that you have to see, feel, look at, acknowledge, honor, change, and shift everything inside of your body that is no longer serving you, that is holding you back from stepping into new expressions of your human experience. Everything. Change is a constant. It's the only thing that we can actually depend on is change. You will be shifting and changing every day, all day. If you stay in a flow state, you will recognize how often change is arising within you, which is every second of every moment because nothing is stagnant, nothing is permanent, nothing stays. So I experience a massive amount of stress in my body. I can feel the actual stress when it enters my body I, I know when I'm stepping into stress, meaning I'm starting to open up my computer and I'm now looking at what I need to find for receipts and I can feel the stress starting to move through my body. I'm aware of it. I'm observing it. I go through what I need to do to gather all the receipts. I can feel myself in that zone. I can feel that stress. And then I move about and do something else. And guess what? The stress is gone. I don't focus on the stress. I don't freak out over the stress. I don't try to figure out how to get rid of the stress. The stress is in the moment that I am in with the taxes, and then the stress dissolves as I shift and do something else. Maybe it stays, 
while I'm moving, while I'm going to my yoga class, or maybe it stays while I am doing emails or something else. Maybe it stays while I'm doing meditation. I don't know. I don't give a shit. I'm not trying to control it. I just know that it has a process of movement because it's energy. That's all it is. And what I know for sure that I've been experiencing is that this stress with the IRS audit has just been coming and going. I don't have it in my body right now. How do I know? Because I know what stress feels like. I know the feeling of it. And so why is it, a, why am I able to have it just come and go? Because I stay present. I'm not grabbing what is creating the stress. So I'm not grabbing the, the IRS audit. Does that make sense? I'm not thinking about the audit. I'm not dwelling on it. I'm staying as present as I possibly can be. And if you're present in your days, whatever is showing up is only going to show up when it shows up and then something new is going to show up and then something new is going to show up. But you're all, but like that IRS audit is here. It's not going anywhere. I have to deal with it every day, but I don't have to anchor in the energies of the IRS audit all day long. It's not designed to be anchored into me all day long. I'm not designed to be in stress all day long. The reason that we are in stress, we feel that stress or that anxiety all day long is because we're holding this, we're anchoring it, we're thinking about it. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to fix it. We're trying to change it. We're trying to futurize what's going to happen. The more that I stay present, the more that I let go of trying to figure out what is going to happen with this IRS audit, the more I just get present, which means what is next? What is right here? What do I need to do right now? What do I need to do now? What do I need to do now? What am I, what is happening in this moment? This goes away. The stress goes away. And then the moment that I have to enter, open up an email and start pulling out the receipts, guess what? Stress comes in, but it's in that moment. That's it. That's a flow state. Flow state and being in your highest uh, state of being does not mean you're not going to feel stress. It doesn't mean you're not going to feel anxiety. It doesn't mean you're not going to perhaps get cancer or, you know, have an, uh, the IRS come after you or lose your job. That's not what it means. Being in a flow state, moving through this evolution, stepping into higher states of consciousness is not stepping out of the uncomfortable. It's not not experiencing life and what life's going to throw at you. It's being in it. With ease and grace, that is the practice. If we think that somehow we're going to be able to, uh, you know, run from the world right now, it doesn't mean that you don't do what you need to do. You don't have tools to assist you. That's not what I'm saying. Obviously, you're not a victim to what is happening in the world. You don't just sit there and say, oh, well, this is just happening. I'm just going to let this happen to me. You're conscious of what is occurring on the planet. You're conscious of what is occurring in your life. You're conscious of what is occurring inside of you. There's a consciousness. I know what I'm going through. I know what the planet's going through. I know what humanity is going through. I understand this massive evolutionary shift in consciousness. I feel it. I see it. I acknowledge it. I get it. I have my tools that I do that I use. I stay present. I breathe. I go outside in nature. I move my body. I get into the hot room, the hot yoga room. I do these things. You know, I try to travel if I can. These are the things that assist me. In life. But I don't run from whatever shows up. I don't run from the fact that I've had to let really beautiful people in my life go because of whatever has occurred between us. I don't run from the the awareness 
that, uh, you know, I have massive insecurities about my, my, how I show up in life. I don't run from, uh, any stresses that move through my body. I don't run from anxiety. I don't run from, uh, you know, the unworthiness. I don't run from these things. Meaning I don't try to sh shift it or fix it. I just let whatever arises to be shown to be to me by me through my body. My body showing me the stress. Look, Lori, can you feel the stress? Holy shit, I can. What's causing you that stress? Oh, finding all the receipts right now that I don't have, that nobody has, that I'm not going to be able to show because it's from 2020. Oh, okay. Cool. Keep going. Okay. Flow state. You don't have control of the future. All you have control of is you're right here, right now. And even that you don't have control over. You know? Thank you, Taz, for the super chat. Appreciate that. You know, one of the things that's, that really helps you guys, what if you're if you are in something that you are really you don't know how to move through or you're uncomfortable in or whatever it is, okay? There are a couple things you want to do. One, you have to start observing. You've got to observe. What am I in right now? I'm sitting here on my computer reading over this email I got from my accountant, feeling nauseous, feeling stressed, in a freeze mode. What happens to me when I get massive amounts of stress is I, I have overload and then I freeze and then I can't do anything. And then I just stress the fuck out. And it's like, I'm just in my head, like stressing, like the stress and anxiety literally makes me freeze. And then I, I don't even know what to do. I can't do anything. I observe that. I'm a, I, I have to be the observer of that. Being the observer of that is what allows you to start to move through it. So the observer, practicing being the observer means I am feeling dot, dot, dot. I am frozen because dot, dot, dot. I just opened an email. I can't even get through the first two paragraphs. I am literally having an anxiety attack. Anxiety attacks, stress attacks will literally like make you, you won't even know how to make a decision. You'll be like, I, I'm, I'm going to die. Pretty sure I'm, I don't, I'm, this is, I'm going to give up. I'm just going to throw in the towel and just, I'm having, I can't, I don't know what to do. Be aware of that. Be the observer. Be the observer. Be the, oh my God, I'm freezing. Oh my God, I feel like I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh my God, I don't even know what step to take first. Oh my God, I don't, I, I literally think I'm going to, I'm going to blow up. I'm going to explode. I'm going to, I, I, what, ha, I don't, I like those, those, those moments of like, there's so much stress and anxiety that like you, you, you don't know, there's like nothing to grab. Like you're imploding. Be aware of it. Observe it. Observe yourself as much as you possibly can. I am now doing dot, dot, dot. I am now feeling dot, dot, dot. That is it. The first step that is so essential. Step number two is to remind yourself that you are moving through something. Okay, I am moving through this IRS audit. All I have to focus on is right here, right now. I am moving through this. When you remind yourself that you're moving through something, okay, when you force yourself to remember this, right, then you, you will, you will, you will know that you're not stuck. It's that feeling of stuckness that freaks you out. I'm moving through this, right? The third thing you want to do is one step at a time, one step at a time. If you're having massive anxiety, if you're massively stressed out, if you're, if you don't want to experience what you're experiencing, if you're fighting against it, one step at a time, 
one tiny baby step at a time, which for you may be, I'm going to take a shower. Beautiful. One step at a time. I am going to put my shoes on. Great. One step at a time. I'm going to make this phone call. One step at a time. I'm going to go, you know, go pick up my children. One step at a time. Be the observer. Recognize that you are moving through something. One step at a time. Just one baby step at a time. And then four, you want to breathe. 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 It's totally overwhelming if you have five, uh, you know, if you're hit, being hit by all sides. Massive wake up call. Ma and, and the biggest wake up call, if you're being hit by five different things, okay, your job, money, your relationship, your health, it's just coming at you. You want to know the number one thing you're being asked to do? Compassion for yourself. Most likely, if you are being hit with all these things in your life, you're probably very hard on yourself. I'm not saying that's why this is happening. I'm just saying pay attention to how hard you are on yourself, how you beat yourself up. What are the things that you say to yourself? Do you have compassion for you? Are you telling yourself that you should be doing it a certain way? You should have already had this figured out. You should know what to do. You shouldn't have done all these things in the past. Why did you, how, are you beating yourself up? How are you speaking to yourself? How much guilt are you throwing on yourself? This is why it is so important that we pay attention. Thank you, Lola, for that super chat. Um, I'm going to Toastmasters to work on my fear of public speaking. Yay. This is why it is so important to pay attention to all the ways that you are being hit, all the different angles in your life right now. It's not for nothing. It's not so that you suffer. It's so much deeper than that. Pay attention to how you are being with yourself. Pay attention to how you are being with others. You want to know one of the other things that I've been recognizing with this first world problem of the freaking United States IRS coming after me is the amount of compassion. I, I practice compassion for myself a lot, so I'm pretty good at that, right? Even though I have a lot of insecurity and I have a lot of unworthiness, meaning I, I, I feel a lot of unworthiness and insecurity, one of the things that I do practice a lot of compassion for myself, right? I, I think I'm a badass. I'm always patting myself on the back. I'm always like, Lori, you've got this. Keep going. You're a rock star. So I have compassion for my human journey. <laughs> what this past experience has been doing for me is having compassion for humanity. And what I mean by that is that I, when I walk outside now, I... I have my heart, I feel more for humanity. I don't know why or what happened, but when I got, being pummeled like this has allowed my heart to open up more to humanity. Literally, I have been smiling at every single person. I don't know about you, but I don't smile at people. And here's the other thing. I didn't even realize that I didn't smile at people until I started smiling at every single person. Do you want to know the power of smiling at every single person? Do it. And you probably, some of you are probably like, girl, I smile at all the day with all the time with people. I didn't. I didn't smile. If someone smiled at me, I smiled back. But I started smiling at every single person and it's it's jaw dropping on an energetic level what that does energetically between you and that person. Because most people are in their own world. They're literally trying to survive. They're trying to survive their inner world. They're trying to survive the external world. And when you smile at somebody, shifts them. Instantaneously, you become human to human. You're like, I see you. I see you. All it takes is a freaking smile. Practice. Smile at every single person. 
It's a, it's a way of communicating on an energetic level that is heart to heart. When you smile, your heart is opening to their heart. Their heart opens to your heart and you are humans. You're, you become, you, you're like, I, we're in this together. It's the most mundane, basic tool that we have to connect to my, to our, to our humanity. And the more you do it, the more your heart will open. The more you do it, the more you will realize how connected you are to every single other human. It takes a smile. It's the most insanely easy, obvious thing that we don't do. Obviously, if you're wearing a mask, you know, but think about the power of, think about what masks have done to us. I mean, on so many levels. But I mean, the the impact of a smile is so profound that to take that away from humanity separates us. It creates a divide. A smile unifies us. A smile literally energetically connects us heart to heart. And when you take that away, you create more separation. On an energetic level, you do. Practice. I'll, 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 don't listen to me. Practice. Smile at every single person and watch how much more connected you are to humanity all day long. And then come back to me and tell me that you feel less connected. The masks create divide and separation. It's just one layer of it. I'm not saying don't wear a mask, do whatever the heck you want to do. I'm just saying that the power of smiling every single day, all day long with people will shift you and it will shift the other people. And it's that simple. It's the same thing with our breath. The fastest way to move something through you that you don't like is to breathe. And yet it's the hardest thing for us to do. It's right here. Everything that we need is right here. The smile is right here. And what you'll notice is most people aren't smiling right? And then you smile and then they smile and then it's like, holy shit. It's the most beautiful thing. It'll make you fucking cry. I swear to God. I will. And we need more of that because most humans are being pummeled right now and they don't understand it. Humans are being pummeled into feelings and emotions and thoughts and behaviors and ways of being that, um, that they don't understand. This is an internal shifting that's happening right now, not so much an external. So 2020 and 2021 was very much of an external shift, right? The external world changed for a lot of us. And when that external world changes, we are forced to make changes, right? So the last 2020 and 2021 was all about the external change. A lot of our lives changed forever because of that. Okay, the external world did. 2022 was all about the internal change. Okay, now that the world catapulted you and shifted you in so many ways externally, right? Not for everybody, but for a lot of us. Now we need you to go in. 2022 was all about the internal awareness, the internal shifting. Big. I'm sure 2020 and 2021 was as well for you guys, but 2022 was all about internal shifts. Your internal beliefs, your internal thoughts, your internal emotions, your internal trauma, your internal behaviors and pattern, patterning, all of the ancestral stuff, all of it was being asked to look at. And it's just increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing as we get closer to 2023. 2023 has the opportunity to catapult us into the most magical ways of living on this planet while we simultaneously watch some pretty horrific things unravel. That's why the internal work is so important. The internal work is so important because you have to be able to stand in what is going to be unraveled to us, the, the darker agendas, you know, the evil, the control, the manipulation, all of that. We have to, we're, we're, we're still in it, I'm not going anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere. You haven't gotten out of it. So the internal work is assisting you in being able to stand in it. 
You have to do the internal work and you have to do the external work. You have to balance both. So when I get rattled with this like IRS audit, right, I know that it is simultaneously allowing me to learn or practice or remember how to just be present and in a flow state to not run from anything. And at the same time, it's allowing me to stand in some pretty uh, dark programs that we live on in the planet. To me, the IRS in the United States is a, is a pretty corrupt system in my opinion. And so I'm now standing in an external and an internal shadow kind of, right? So I'm standing in the shadow of what I would call the IRS. It's very controlling. Um, it's very manipulative. It's, um, it's not, uh, about the expansion of our evolution. So I have to stand in that. I'm not running. I'm not at the place where I'm not going to pay taxes. I'm standing in this. I'm aware of this. I can, I'm feeling the anger and the, the jaw dropping, holy shit and the control energies. I'm feeling that. Welcome to the third dimension. Welcome to the planet. I'm aware of it. I'm seeing it. I'm not ignoring it. I'm not denying it. I'm not sugarcoating it. And I'm simultaneously feeling my own internal stress and anxiety that I'm being asked to just practice letting move through me. That is the being, that's the human experience. That's the human journey. That's evolution. It's not about, um, you know, we can't run from this shit. We have to learn how to master it. The key to freedom is to stand in what you're in and not run from it. That's the key to freedom. That's freedom. That's true freedom. Is when you can stand in anything and it doesn't have control over you. It doesn't control you. How do you know you're still controlled? You want to run from something. If you're trying to run from something, it has control over you. That's the master. That's what you're here to do. Can you stand in it? I think one of the things many of us are realizing is that there isn't anywhere to run. We're going to have to go through this. And I think a lot of people in the spiritual, in the real deep, deep spiritual community, the like new agey spiritual community, they're going to have to come to grips with this. You, you're 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 gonna have to stand in the dark. You're going to have to feel everything. You can't bypass. You have to learn how to remember that you are not. I'm not uh, the IRS system. I'm not that control. I'm not that manipulation. I have to recognize that I'm standing in a matrix. I'm standing in something and I'm going to observe it and I'm going to play the game, but I'm not going to let it control me. How do I know? How do you know if you're letting it control you? You're giving your power away. You're letting yourself get wrapped up in it. You're letting the fear take over. You're letting the control and manipulation that the United States IRS has is going to create a lot of fear in you. If you perpetuate that fear and you live in fear, then it's controlling you. It's not about stepping out of the IRS system, in my opinion. It's about stepping out of what the IRS system is doing to you, which is creating fear, which is control and manipulation. If I don't have any fear over the fucking IRS, 
then it doesn't have any control over me. And it's not manipulating me. I'm just playing a game called the human journey in a matrix that is very fucked up. So what? So what? And most, not everyone's going to have that same belief or that same opinion. You don't have to. I'm just saying that things are going to get a lot more intense on the planet. And it's about choosing how you go through it. Choosing your state of being is way more important. I'm telling you. Your state of being is going to be 10 times more important than trying to step out of these systems. At least for the next couple of years. Yes, we're creating new systems. Yes, we're creating a new earth. Yes, we're creating a new world. Yes, we are. And we are also simultaneously in some deep, deep shit. So you pay attention to the new systems that are available to step into, perhaps. You pay attention to the fact that you may not have the ability to step into these new systems. You pay attention to the fact that you may have to stand in these systems for quite some time. And then you start to choose your state of being in them so that they do not control you and manipulate you through fear. Fear is how they are going to continue to control us. You have to pay attention to the fear. And many times there will be anger and frustration around that fear and around that manipulation and around that control. And then you have to go deeper beyond that anger, beyond that rage. And you have to find a state of contentment in it. That's the master. It's a state of being that's very, very difficult to teach. It's a state of being that's very difficult to explain. Because it's a state of beingness. Where nothing is impacting you in the way that it used to but you're not ignoring it. You're not bypassing it. You're not positive thinking your way out of it. You're courageously eyes open saying, look at what the fuck I'm in. Holy shit. The IRS is coming after me. Most likely they're going to hand me a big fat fucking bill to pay them again, even though I just paid them God knows how much money. Okay, next. They're not going to get my state of mind. They're not going to get my state of being. They're not going to get my peace. They're not going to get that. That's what we are learning how to master is this internal world. It's very difficult. But you're being asked to do that. That's why it's so important. Tying it back to the internal. That's why it's so important for you to be able to stand in whatever you're experiencing inside. Because if you're running from what you are just you're experiencing inside, what your body's just trying to show you, then you're sure as hell going to run from out there. The internal is teaching you so much right now. It's teaching you how to just be in what you're in, allowing it to just move, allowing it to just. Whew. Allowing everything to just move through you, regardless of how uncomfortable it is. It's how you react, bottom line. Yeah, it's how you respond. It really is. It's how you respond. 
The world needs way more love right now, you guys. I'm sorry, but it really does. And I think that the more that we get pummeled, I hope to God it opens up our hearts even more. I hope that the more that we get rattled, we realize how much more compassion humanity needs. You know? The amount of anger that is going to start to be experienced. 2023 is going to bring up, I have a couple minutes left. 2023 is going to bring up a lot of more anger in people. Because the the when, when humans feel anger, which I, I feel anger a lot, you know, when you feel anger, there is a sense of being out of control. You don't, in, you don't want to experience whatever it is you're experiencing. So there's anger. And if you are not wanting to experience what you're experiencing in your own personal life, you're going to have a lot of anger for the external world. It's how you express the anger that you're feeling about your own internal world. And more and more humans are going to be rattled into awarenesses that they don't want to see in 2023. And it's going to create a lot more anger. So what's your job? Your job is to hold a lot more love. That's your job. That's your role. Is to have more compassion for the humans that are going to be erupting on the planet. All of us that are aware of this experience right now is are, we're going first in this. It's like these 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 rows of humans that are standing in a battlefield, right? There's rows of 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 soldiers. And some of us are on the front lines going first. We're, we're going to be destroyed first so that we can turn around and help the other humans behind us so that they don't get as pummeled as we did. That's why you're going first. That's, a, that's another level of awareness of what's happening. So the anger that you have been feeling, if you've been feeling a lot more anger lately, it's so that you can see how you are being with the anger. You can recognize, wow, when I feel angry, I really want to project it out onto people. Yep. What's actually happening when I get angry at the systems, when I get angry with that, is that I'm not comfortable with the now. I'm not comfortable in what I'm experiencing. I'm not comfortable with what I'm feeling. Okay. Can I feel what it is that I uncomfortably don't want to feel that's creating the anger? I just feel it instead of projecting it out onto people. Then what's going to happen in the next year, as more and more people start projecting their anger onto you, you're going to remember when you were feeling that anger and you're going to have compassion for them. You're not going to perpetuate the frequency of anger. That's what's happening. So pay attention to every single thing that you're experiencing because you are on the front lines going first on the battlefield. Most likely, we are the ones that are getting beat up the most because we're going first. Have you ever watched the movies? I've always watched these movies and been like, dude, I would never want to be on the front lines. You know, the battlefield, the battles, you know, um, where they're, you know, they're they're standing and there's like lines of 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 the soldiers and you're like, dude, if I was on the the front line, people are the ones that get killed first. And you're like, I want to be in the back so that I can watch what's happening and kind of skirt my way through this and try not to get murdered and killed in the battlefield. So that's what we're doing first. Everything that you're going through is, is, is on another layer is to assist humanity in going through it. Hard to hold. Doesn't make what you're going through easier. Definitely doesn't make sense for a lot of us. Like, okay, I'm going through an audit in the, with the IRS. My girlfriend's going through some health issue. Like, how the hell is that helping humanity? It, watch it is. How are you navigating it? How are you being? For some reason, I'm smiling at every single human now. 
and I never did before. It's going to shift you so that you can shift humanity. All right, you guys, we're done. Another episode of Untangled finished. Um, one last thing before I go, thank you guys so much for being a part of this community. Um, I am going to be on Untangled next Tuesday. I will be in Hawaii. I'm trying to do my best to take some time out um, in the next two weeks and to go inward and to be quiet, but we'll see how that goes. If you want to join me today, it is um, my last live online event for 2022. It's called Activate 2023. It's two hours. It's going to be very, very powerful. It's at 12 o'clock. So it's in two hours, 12 o'clock California time. It's $29. We do have scholarships if you can't afford it. The link is going to be right down below in the description. You can also email us um, to get information. The email is contact at laurilad.com. Uh, we're going to do some meditations. We're going to, we're going to, um, we're going to set some intentions. We're going to, um, uh, integrate 2022 and we're going to really, um, have a deeper awareness of what we're stepping into for 2023, you know? So if you want to join, I would love to have you. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you next Tuesday, whatever date that is. Um, for Untangled, episode 31, the last episode of the year. I love you so much. Be gentle with yourselves, be gentle with others, and smile at every human that you come in contact with and watch your life change. I love you. Mwah.